उससे बचने के लिए कम से कम विशेष रूप से व्यवस्था करें धन्यवाद श्री मोहम्मद फैसल जी Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Sir, uh, for allowing me to participate in the Wildlife Protection Amendment Bill 2021, and I'm thankful to my party for posing faith on me. The bill seeks uh, to increase the species to be protected. I appreciate the kind of effort the Honourable Minister and the team have carried out to bring in a draft amendment by way of the Wildlife Protection Amendment Bill 2021. And I'm in support of the bill, but at the same time, I wish to get a few clarification from the Honorable Minister on certain issues. The first one is the, the whole ambit of the bill. What I feel that the, the emphasis is more given on the management of the resources rather than the protection. Why I said wildlife management takes into consideration the ecological principles as such, as carrying capacity of the habitat, preservation and control of the habitat, reforestation, predator control, reintroduction of extinct species, capture and reallocation of abundant species, and management of desirable or undesirable species. Protection of wildlife and management of resources should be addressed with the same importance, and a shift from the protection aspect to the management of resources may weaken the protection strategies of scheduled fauna and flora. Further, sir, the proposed amendment must include a section to mandate the central and state government to protect and conserve areas outside the, uh, the protection areas, which are known as recognized as wildlife habitats. The bill also misses the, an opportunity to recognize the protect corridors of the important migratory routes and flyways. Most of the proposed amendments lack the careful consideration, scientific rigor, and transparency that the exercise demands. The preamble itself is problematic. Whereas earlier the emphasis one was on the protection of wild animals, birds, and plants, the amendment introduced the term management. While seeming innocuous, this implies a shift in the mindset of the government from the protection of wildlife to its management as a resource. So my second point is uh, the vermin species. On this, the criteria need to be adopted, sir. In the present act, the central government can declare any wild elf animal, which is not in the Schedule 1 and 2 of the Schedule 2, as vermin under Section 62. The proposed amendment has reduced the list of wild animals appended to the act from four schedules to two schedules. In doing so, the bill now proposes that any wild animal not listed in the Schedule 1 can be declared as vermin, which means that all animals listed in Schedule 2 can't be declared as vermin. The list includes 41 mammals, 864 birds, 12 reptiles, 5 amphibians, 58 insects, 14 mollusks, and 10 sponges, which may be declared as vermin by the central government while most of the animals which can be declared as vermin in the present act and the proposed bill may not have significant differences in the composition of the species covered. And the, the other part is the central government must deliberate the justification on listing the, uh, uh, the, the vermin and animals because while you, the purpose of declaration of any animal as vermin has been to control the population of animal which is beyond management. Such an exercise must be undertaken with utmost caution and respecting the constitutional duty, Article 48A, of the government to protect the forest and the wildlife. So the third point is that, uh, as far as coming to the elephant trade, the bill allows that. But here we need a clarification there. And the newly inserted Section 43.4 states that, with an inverted, the section shall not apply to transfer or transport of any live elephant by a person having a certificate of ownership where such persons have obtained prior permission from the state government on fulfillment of such conditions as may be prescribed by the central government. Here, the section is unclear uh, to, uh, as to meaning of the prior permission from where? The state government and from which state government? The government uh, which is from where the, uh, the, the, the origin of the transport is happening or to the state which is going. 
So we need to have a clarification on such permission from where to where the animal is being transported. And such transport, such transport, I must say that such transport must be made, uh, you know, to, in the notice of the chief life wardens or the authorized officials. It is necessary uh, for, for the interest of the elephant protection that any transfer or interstate transport to be notified to the chief wildlife or authorized official of the jurisdiction where the elephant has been transferred or transported from the jurisdiction to which the elephant has been transferred or transported. Such and on that, uh, such record should also be maintained by the concerned authority. So coming back to the centralization, this is the most important part which uh, we, we are always discussing. On that part, the bill render the existing state boards for wildlife as a defunct one. The bill weakens premier institutions like the State Board for Wildlife, headed by the Chief Minister, for all their emphasis on clearing projects with the pro protected areas. Some state boards like Karnataka and Maharashtra have been proactive in expanding the protected area networks. It is now proposed to establish a standing committee of the S SBWL to be headed by the Forest Minister, effectively rendering the SBWL defunct. This was the case with the National Board also, sir. Sir, the, uh, to be headed by the, uh, the International Board. Please conclude. Uh, yeah, I'm concluding. It dilutes the gra gravities of the BSB, reducing the body to me. Yes, yeah, sir. I have some. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Reducing the ambit of the gravitas of the BSB, reducing to be a body meeting with the sole purpose of allowing damaging products with the PAs. Product. Sir, one more, one more issue is that they are trying to include the Niti Ayog into the uh, standing committee. Most of the Niti Ayog projects are contrary to the conservation part, sir. So this all aspect to be uh, to taken into consideration, and I need a clarification from the, the other side. Sir, final point, increasing the ambit of legislation by using the term wildlife, which includes any animal, aquatic, or land vegetation that forms a part of the habitat. As far as my constituency, I'm concluding, sir, give me just one or two minutes, sir. As far as uh, Lakshadweep is concerned, I urge that more detailed discussion should be there by expert in the listing of individual species in, instead of groups. Sir. Listing of individual species instead of group is a major deviation from the current act and it will need further consideration. This can give rise to taxonomic ambiguity when identifying species and filing wildlife offenses in many cases. Sir. Additionally, many species from these groups have not been included in the current schedule. Also, new species are still getting described, which is especially true for invertebrates, corals, sponges, and amphibians. And these newly reported won't get due protection as per the legislation we are going for listing individuals instead of group. Sir, as far as Lakshadweep is concerned, it's my, it's, uh, marine life is not completely known till. Research works are going on, on to list undiscovered aquatic flora and fauna, which may contribute much more for the biodiversity concern. If individuals are listed instead of groups, sir, these individuals which should be protected for conservation of the ecological balance of islands can be included in the schedule, which may lead to large scale of destruction, which is going to happen by constructing the lagoon villa, sir. Though their name changed the water villa, the lagoon villa which is proposed to come in Lakshadweep is in the lagoon area. The lagoon area is the only area for the preservation and conservation of corals, which is the life of islands, sir. When the coral is destroyed, then the, the existence of island is on stake. And uh, the administration is saying that the permission has got from the environment, clear, environment uh, ministry. I'm very doubtful. I would like to get a, a note on that, sir, whether it is clear or not. And the final part, sir, uh, see the sea cucumber. Sea cucumber is, uh, you know, is such, is falling under the schedule one, which is protected under. But the problem is the awareness which is not given to the people there. The, uh, the uh, cost of one kilogram Three. of sea cucumber, sir, I'm just, just, just one, I'm just concluding, sir. Over, over. Just, just completely. This is the most important part, sir. Sir, uh, one kilogram of sea cucumber values nearly 5,000 to 12,000 rupees per kilogram. Now, recently, sir, to, you know, to protect the sea cucumber, the same ministry, sir, you, you, you sanctioned a special scheme appointing marine watchers in the anti-poaching camps. And to, due to that, we could seizure the smuggling of these you know, seafood smugglers. And there has been a CBI case on that, sir. But what happened after the new administrator come in, sir, entire marine watchers they have been retrenched from the job, and smuggling is going on, sir.
I have highlighted the point to you. I have given a dual letter to you, sir. So this is concerned with the ministry's scheme, centrally sponsored scheme, implementing at the island. I don't know what is the problem yeah, with the administration to implement it. So kindly, sir, I am concluding it, sir. Uh, this on this aspect, clarification is required from your side. With all this, I support the bill. Thank you so much, sir.